Oh, welcome back to, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> welcome back to Let's Play uh, Starfleet Academy. So we seem to be getting near the end of the Venturi uh, Raider set, and we have gotten corn scores up, but Brady's still lacking a little bit. So uh, hopefully after this next mission, we'll have a chance to do something about that. The actions of the Venturi Raiders are not popular with the majority of the people on Venturi home. Several Venturi diplomats are aboard the USS LaGrange. You will escort the LaGrange to Omega-12-300, which the diplomats report is the headquarters for the Venturi raiding force. There, they will attempt to negotiate a settlement. There is a problem. Omega-12-300 is beyond the galactic barrier, a mysterious energy field that encompasses the known galaxy. You will have to penetrate the barrier in order to reach the Venturi. This is an extremely dangerous area that's known to have dangerous side effects on some of the people traveling through it. So be careful. Captain's Log, Stardate 3221.6. We are scheduled to escort the USS LaGrange to the Venturi stronghold outside the Galactic Barrier in order to negotiate a settlement to the Venturi Crisis. All right, Mickey, I hail the LaGrange. No response, Captain. Captain, three Venturi ships just came out of warp. They are coming at us on an attack vector. Alert! Correction, they're attacking us. All hands to battle stations, divert power to the shields. Corn, you may fire at will, Miss Acton, get us into the fight. Corn, target one of the lights. Fire one ready. Alright, stay on them. Alright. Stay on him, Miss Acton. You get hailed the medium cruiser. Uh, slippery little bastard, isn't he? Woo! He's not going anywhere now. All right, target the other light raider. At least they're in our weight class. Or in target their warp engines. Good job. Target the medium warp engines. All stop. All Venturi ships have been destroyed or disabled, Captain. Starbase 23 is secure. But we lost the Lagrange. Captain, an instant before the LaGrange was destroyed, I sensed something. It was as if I was in a mine meld with someone who was experiencing a sharp pain. You think there were Vulcans on the LaGrange? There were no Vulcans or individuals with known psi talents aboard the LaGrange. What I sensed seemed like it originated far away, farther than my mind could comprehend. It was a mine of great power. Incoming message from Starfleet, Captain. Let's hear it. With the destruction of the LaGrange, our peace mission is over. However, we do know the location of the Venturi base. Your new orders are to proceed to Omega-12-300 and reconnoiter the Venturi forces. We need accurate intelligence on Venturi capabilities. Starfleet out. Course laid in, Captain. All right. Uh, that's right. I want to do my experiment and see... So right now our total power consumption is oh we're decelerating so 72 per 71 percent let's remove the power from the tractor beam i don't know if that's just like a reserve or if we use it no it actually is powered up and in like a standby mode all right shields Decrease power because we do have to warp out of here soon. Brady. Uh, just focus on what's damaged right now. Oh, look from shields. Lower shields repaired. All right, that's good. Um, what's our shield status? It looks like all around our shields are decent. Uh, before we cross the barrier, 
Let's read up on it. Galactic Barrier. An energy field of unknown origin at the perimeter of the Milky Way galaxy. Barrier has been described in the texts of the Inani and Venturi civilizations, both of which are said to have crossed it frequently. Earth forces first encountered the barrier in 2064, when it was first crossed by the SS Valiant. After, 26, oh, after that, it was crossed by the USS Enterprise in 2265. On both occasions, certain crew members became endowed with psionic abilities that caused them to become threats to their crews. The barrier is currently being studied by Starfleet We've Research. Repairs on the tractor beam, sir. Thank you, Brady. Barrier is currently being studied by a Starfleet research team headed by the Vulcan Plasma field physicist Shovak. Starfleet directives forbid ships to cross the barrier without authorization. ESS Valiant. ESS Valiant was sent on an exploratory mission in 2060 and was swept into the galactic barrier. Records gathered over 200 years later by the USS Enterprise indicated that at least one of the crew was mutated into a powerful malevolent psychic and the captain was forced to destroy the ship. And yes, I read over their uh, typo there since the Enterprise visited in 226. Yeah, so about uh, 201 years later. USS Enterprise, perhaps the most famous spacecraft in the history of Starfleet, the Enterprise is a Federation Constitution class starship registry number NCC 1701, launched in 2245 from the San Francisco Yards orbiting Earth. The Enterprise was originally commanded by Captain Robert April and then by Captain Christopher Pike before entering into a five year mission under Captain James Tiberius Kirk. The original Enterprise was destroyed just before its scheduled retirement in 2285. When Captain Kirk self-destructed the Enterprise so that it would not fall into the hands of the Klingon Empire. Its replacement, the NCC-1701A, was commissioned shortly thereafter by the Federation and is currently in service under the command of Captain Kirk. And we've already read the uh, entry on Venturi. Brady, how are those repairs coming? Alright, they're done. We'll lock that in. This act and set a course for the Omega 300 system. Warp 6, engage. Galactic barrier in 10 seconds. All hands brace for impact. Medical team, stand by. Ready, divert power to shields. Entering Omega 12 300 system. To complete our mission, we should scan the Venturi base. Um, Captain, we have a malfunction in the warp field generator. We have full power in the warp engines, but no way to use our warp drive. All right, let's see if there's anyone to draw Captain, out. Captain, Prelet Elshoff is hailing us. He's forcing his transmission on screen. This is quite a pilgrimage you've made, Captain. Perhaps now we can clear up the misunderstandings that have plagued our relationship. Now, why have you been attacking my followers? Many people have problems with the actions of your followers. Are you willing to answer for them? The conflicts we have experienced in the past are merely the misfortune of war, Captain. Your people should put it behind them and get on with their lives. But you do want to make peace with the Federation, don't you, Alshoff? I answer to the will of God, Captain. And strangely enough, it suddenly seems to me that he doesn't want peace. 
at all. All right, Brady, let's check those power. 93% total power. And we have damage to the warp engines, but you're working on it. Uh, let's see here. Let's slow down a little bit. All right, one of them is definitely closer than the rest. Let's target that one. Mr. Sturrix. Scan that chip, Captain, please. This vessel appears to be an alien derelict predating the Federation. From the rate of atomic decay within the ship's hull, I would guess that this vessel is over 70,000 years old. The Venturi renegades must have found these ships and restored them. It's no wonder no one's ever seen them before. Holy shit. All right. Corn, target their warp engines. If we can cut off their power, they should be less of a threat to us. And it seems like they've got a... Uh, a full deck of uh, medium cruisers, which we are not a match for. <laughs> All right, head in full impulse, corn, fire when ready. This act and be prepared to take evasive maneuvers. Upper shields have been hit. Upper shields repaired. All right. Upper shields have been hit. Upper shields down to fifty percent. Support has been hit. Forward shields repaired. There we go. How do you like those photons? Have been hit. I give me one more volley of torpedoes. There we go. All right, take him out. Emergency power. Get us impulse engines now. Okay, we are gaining. Gr nope, we are losing ground. Port side shields repaired. Upper shields repaired. We don't. Okay, now we're. Uh, Increasing the distance. It is a Venturi ship, Captain. I don't know why scanning it uh, made it show up as blue on our radar, because it most certainly is not. Oh, now he's gaining on us again. But if we can get... I suppose life support should also be a priority. Alright, uh... Life support is offline. Impulse engines are 86% in repairing. Shields are at 38%. Warp offline. Tractor beam disabled. Photons and phasers have damaged, but they're working. Okay, life support's online, so we don't have to worry about dying. Uh, yeah, we're using max power. If we can keep out running him I'd say let's reduce power the shields the photons and phasers that should allow us to uh, turn off emergency power there we go I think now we can Basically, I have a standard distribution here. And we'll keep a lock on this derelict ship. Reduce impulse to 70% power. Looks like we are still losing them. Oh, they're closing now. Increase speed to 80% power. There we go. That's more or less keeping distance with them. So, uh, uh, not much to do here. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't really know how to fill this time other than waiting for repairs. Uh, 
uh, I guess I'll put some music on or something, but I gotta take care of something real quick, so I shall be right back. Alright, I am back, and it looks like they've broken off their pursuit, so let's go to engineering real quick. Um, I just want to adjust allocations here. Warp gets full power. Shields is, or not power, but uh, damage control. Tractor beam and phasers seem to be weak points. Now, as far as energy goes, uh, let's check our... This is a Venturi ship, Captain. Thank you. Let's reinitialize our Crystals shield are system. Captain. Warp drives are ready. There we go. So, that brings up all our... I wonder if that's a bug that, uh, they can, uh... Phases are online again. Ready to fire on your orders. Just completely go away like that. All right, looks like we're green across the board. The lock-in shields. Bring down the tractor beam. And then Brady continue to... Oh, okay, we have power to shields. Increase power to photons. Increase power to phasers. This act in full impulse core and target their warp engines. We got to cut their power. And fortunately on these uh, medium cruisers of theirs, it's pretty easy to break off once we get past their shields, but we gotta get past their shields, so. Alright, Korn, fire when, when, when in range, Miss Acton, prepare for evasive maneuvers. I gotta say thank God for our uh, Starfleet Miracle Engineers. They truly are the best. Get ready. Port side shields have been hit. Life support has been hit. Alright. Hit him. Alright, slow down. Let's see if we can stay on the backside. Alright, speed up. We gotta keep pushing the offensive here. There we go. Back We've up, back up. Alright. Mikia, hail the converted asteroid. No response, Captain. Hail the No response, Captain. Cruisers? No response, Captain. No response, Captain. No response, Captain. Oh, they really don't want to talk to us. Uh okay, there we go. I guess we'll uh, head in. They are a ways out. They're not even within long range sensor range right now because we had a we had a boogie it a bit. All right, we're kind of close on power, but I think we'll manage. Oh, there we go. We can cut power to communications. We'll cut that to seventy five percent. Get us a little extra edge. Um. God, that's such a pointless system for power. I mean, it's like, yeah, how much does a radio take the power versus, you know, freaking energy shields? <laughs> yes, I know it's subspace radio, but still. I think things like sensors and communications are probably peanuts versus shields and phasers. Or impulse engines or warp engines. Well, we can't take... We can take power from warp. I mean, we aren't warping anytime soon. Does that actually... We've completed repairs on the tractor beam, sir. It looks like it doesn't let us uh, actually take power from the warp engines, which is fine. Uh, it's a little weird in this game, because warp is obviously what generates your power. But to have energy in it, I can't help but wonder if that's... Yeah, here it says zero allocation. But to have energy in it would imply that you're using it for travel, which we aren't anytime soon. So, uh, that's why I question that. We could increase power to sensors, but I feel like that's pointless because we got to get in close anyways. And they're almost within long range sensor, within range of the long range sensors. All right, Brady, it looks like we're still green across the board here. 
All right, the first of them should be crossing into range about now. All right. Once we get within short range sensors, then we can conduct a scan. Looks like we've got a little ways to go before we're in range there though. Let's reboot shields again just because I'm paranoid. Yeah, shields are like 30% of our power right now. Okay, let's get it up to 115% efficiency. They are almost within short range scanner range. Hopefully we'll be able to learn more about them. Miss Acton, prepare for evasive maneuvers. Corn, prepare to fire. Looks like they're idle right now. Miss Acton, reduce speed to half impulse. Ah, Captain, the ship has been subject to a psychokinetic attack. It is a Venturi ship, Captain. It is a Venturi ship, Captain. There is a small base entrenched in the surface of the planetoid. They have a small fusion reactor, a transporter system, and a sensor array. I find no evidence of defensive systems or communications. There are approximately 32 life forms within the complex. All are Venturi. Mission objective complete. Well, they couldn't hail us even if they wanted to, like a call. The Venturi cruiser's power readings far exceed its engine capacity. It is logical, given what we have seen of Alshoff's psychokinetic powers, to assume that Alshoff himself is using his abilities to boost the power of the ship. Corn target is photons. Bring us in close. Miss Acton, full stop. Here with everything we got. Captain with the same psychokinetic force as before. All right, stay behind them. Alshoff is dead. Captain, whatever prevented us from going to war is gone. Alshoff is gone. He must have had extraordinary power. Course laid in, Captain. Yell alert. There is nothing unusual to report, Captain. It is a Venturi ship, Captain. It is a Venturi ship, Captain. It is a Venturi ship, All right, Captain. nothing else to really report on. That's fair. We can uh, divert some powers from the shields now. Let's send an away party to the... Uh, yeah, let's send the landing party to the station. Um, just so that way... Uh, we can see if they need assistance because no comms, no outside contact. This seems very cult like to me. Also, let's, uh. I also want to send another away team to the, um. to one of the Venturi cruisers so we can study their technology and keep the others in line if need be. So, I'll deploy that away team now. We cannot transport anyone while their shields are up, sir. Oh. Well, I'm not going to shoot them. Uh, in any case, we'll leave a probe behind to... Uh, to remind them... Uh, to stay on their best behavior. Launch probe. Probe launched at current target. And if we zoom in really far then I wonder where the fuck is the <laughs> asteroid because it's not showing up in this uh, schematic but if we target around are you sure you launched the pro because I still read 17 uh, torpedoes and it's supposed to take from your complement He's not launching probes for some reason. Oh well. Uh, in any case, let's make one more attempt. No response, Captain. 
I guess our away team no is response, fine Captain. then, and the derelicts no response, are Captain. well no derelict. Response, Captain. I guess he must have been using his psychokinetic powers to um to use them, or perhaps maybe they were just waiting for a repair or something. In any case, Miss Acton, please lay in a course back through the galactic barrier for Starbase Twenty Three, and uh, engage at will. Galactic barrier in ten seconds. All hands brace for impact. Medical team, stand by. Repairs to communication systems complete, sir. Oh, yeah, I should probably put those back to normal power. Um, and they got a lot of mileage out of that cutscene. <laughs> I don't think we really have anything else. Do our probes work here? Nope. Doesn't seem like it. We're still, uh, oh. There's the log. Um... Yeah, we still can't launch them. That's fine. I guess we'll just say they were damaged or something. McGee, hail Starbase 23. Let them know that Alshoff is no longer a threat. And that uh, there should be significantly fewer Venturi Raiders in the future. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. I have a special commendation for you. While at Omega-12-300, you scan the derelict vessels that the Venturi are using as their craft... We now know much more about the origin of the technology that the Venturi are using. That was good thinking on your part. Congratulations on making it through a difficult series. We should also like to extend our special thanks to Sturek for helping us act out the psychic powers of Alshaf in that scenario. The death of Alshaf brings an end to the main raiding force of the Venturi. You may have noticed as the scenarios progressed, the raiders became less communicative. That was no coincidence. Alshaf's mental control over his followers was increasing as time went on. It is possible that you will see Venturi raiders again. Not all of the raiders needed to be coerced to help their leader. Until then, you are dismissed. Well, that certainly explains a few things, because in that first scenario, you know, that guy is like, oh, I need resources to save my planet. But then later they got a mythological bent with uh, Alshoff. Um, so it seems like he built a cult out of the disaffected, and some uh, were obviously taken in by his uh, psychic powers. I presume he got psychic by the barrier, like Gary Mitchell did. Um, but fortunately that threat is over, but we could probably still expect to see, um, some of the raiders that, excuse me, that had a, like that first guy who thinks the Federation isn't doing enough to save their planet. We might see more of them in the future, but most of the fanatics, I think, will be taken care of, so... Uh, let's go, uh, go about our academy life, then. Cadet's log. Despite my best efforts, Robin continues to isolate himself, and it's really hurting his performance. Corrin's grades are still low, and this morning I was called into Rothro's office. Enter! Cadet, I understand you have a busy and full schedule, but that does not account for your performance in the simulator. I expect much better from you and your crew. Yes, sir. Have you seen Corn's ratings for this simulation? No, sir. Corn's ratings have improved dramatically, but there's still an issue with Cadet Brady's performance. I'll talk to Robin about it, sir. Good. Robin is technically proficient, but has trouble meshing with the team. Additional study won't improve his scores. He needs to feel comfortable as a member of your team. Sir, what happens if Robin's scores don't improve? The only way Cadet Brady's scores won't improve is if he can't handle the simulator. His class works fine. 
It's your job to make sure he does well in the simulator. Dismissed. Nakia, what are you doing here? David, I am Dismissed, not going to- Dismissed, Cadet! Yes, sir! Cadet's log, supplemental. I'm worried about Magia, but until I get a chance to talk to her, there's really nothing I can do. Hello, David. Faith Gage. Oh, yes, Faith. How are you doing? Good. Uh, do you mind if I sit? No, go ahead. Thank you. I'm glad I have a chance to talk to you. You know, Corin talks a lot about you. No, well, I'm glad you came by. I... I wanted to talk to you, actually. About one of my crew, Robin Brady? Yeah. Are you two? No. No. <laughs> I have him in a few of my classes, but um, other than engineering, he doesn't seem to have many other interests. Well, he's pulled his head out of a Jeffrey's tube long enough to develop a crush on you. <laughs> yeah. He's a nice kid, but um, I couldn't possibly be interested in someone whose whole life is dilithium matrices. Yeah, I know. I, um, I've been trying to get him out more. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions? Well, yeah, why doesn't he join one of the groups on campus? David, have you been watching the news? No, why? Rother has been repeating the announcement We've every five given minutes. We've official confirmation that the Federation colony on Bicea was destroyed two days ago by unknown forces. There are no survivors. McGee had relatives on Bicea, didn't she? Yeah, her mom lived on that planet. Mm. They better give her some leave time. Well, Bicea was one of the disputed worlds, wasn't it? Right along the Klingon neutral zone? Correct. Mm -hmm. Before the Organian peace treaty, both the Federation and the Klingon Empire had a claim to Bicea. Oh, McGee, yeah, you must feel so awful. Far. McGee, I'm sorry. Thank you, David. All of you for your concern. We can put our missions on hold during your leave of absence. That won't be necessary. As your captain, I could order you to take some time off. You would be exceeding your authority. McGee, I am going to study now. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, a minute. Cadet's log, supplemental. Now what am I going to do? Cadet's log. Despite her recent loss, Magia came through just fine in the last sim. So I guess Starfleet knows best. Although I'm still very worried about her. On the other hand, Robin's scores continue to drop. Enter. Robin, uh, come on in, have a seat. David, you want to talk to me? Robin, I want to talk to you about the team. I thought everything was going okay. Oh, it is, it is. But uh, I want you to spend more time with the team. Outside the simulator. <laughs> Do I have to? Robin, we just, we want your company. At least come to our poker games. I never know what to say to the others. Don't worry about saying anything. The rest of them can talk enough for the both of us. How am I supposed to get anything done if I'm socializing? What, am I supposed to stay out all night like Corrin does? You gotta find a balance, just like Corrin. I don't, I don't like socializing. I like transporter matrices, matter to energy conversions, the new replicator theories. Robin, th the best place for you to learn all about that is here. I'm not sure I'll ever fit in. <sighs> Look, if you leave the academy, you'll never know how, how good you could have been, how far you could have gone. That's not fair. This is easy for you. You fit in. Everybody likes you. Everybody really likes you. You must have noticed by now that I don't fit in. Robin, Robin, sit down, OK? It's really hard on me. That's why you need to socialize more. Look, the only way to fit in is to go into that lounge and face them. I'll try, David. I'll try and socialize more. 
great. And then maybe we can talk about some of those replicator theories you're working on, huh? I'd like that. Okay. Look, I'll, I'll see you in the lounge, okay? Thanks, David. Cadet's log supplemental. You know, just when you think you're handling a problem, another appears. This time, it was by Sia again. The Klingon Empire had nothing to do with the loss of the Vicia colony. However, there is bitter justice in the colony's failure. The Federation should never have put fragile Andorians and humans on such a hostile world. Only Klingons could have tamed Vicia. Liar! What about the energy readings on Vicia? Didn't they show Klingon disruptors destroyed the colony? The trace energy on Bicea was similar to the patterns made by Klingon disruptors, but that does not conclusively prove Klingon involvement. Oh, so was all those other races on the Klingon border that used disruptors. Why are you defending the Klingons, Durek? Though I regret your personal loss, I must point out that Bicea was not a particularly important colony, nor was it strategically placed. It is illogical to assume that the Klingons would start a war in a world that would gain them so little. Well, isn't that just like a Vulcan? using logic to deny the obvious. Face it, Milan, you've lost this argument. We need to change the Federation's whole approach toward the Klingons. How, by going to war? Look, the attack on Bicea was an act of war. We cannot let it go unpunished. If you ask me, the Vanguard is the right answer. The Vanguard? What's that? It is a group that is as tired as you are of the Federation's response to outside threats. The Vanguard says it's time for humans to take care of humans. I see. And what about all the other races that are a part of the Federation? That's just what I'm talking about. What's that supposed to mean? The races inside the Federation already lived the right way. It's the races outside of the Federation that are the problem. Well, I better be going. I got a Xeno psych class. See you later, Milan. Sounds fascinating. Sounds frightening. They might be possibly just what the Federation needs. Well, look, I don't know what the Federation needs, but I need a drink. <laughs> here, here. Well, that's worrying on a lot of levels. Hey, our score got bumped up to 92. I think we were at 90 before. And it looks like Brady's scores has, has gone up 3% already. So it looks like we're getting a handle on him, although now we can see McGee is down to 72% from the 80 she was at before. So now we got another problem, but I'm confident we'll be able to sort it out. Certainly Milan's... Uh, Racism is uh, not appreciated. <laughs> and that he's so blatant with it in front of other races, too. You know, it's very much, oh, they're one of the, you know, like, when he was talking about the Federation, oh, they're one of the good ones. Like, getting that kind of vibe from him. I also kind of feel bad for Brady. I know what it's like to not be uh, socially adept in an academic scenario, but... I think uh, once he makes an effort, he'll fit in just fine. And with that, after that especially long cutscene, I think we're going to come to a close for today here. So with that, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for next time and stay safe out there and we'll see you then.